Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you some fun Halloween party snacks, some things that I'm going to be making this year for my upcoming Halloween party. Over the years, probably for over 10 years now, we've been hosting a big Halloween party. So I kind of know what works and what doesn't. And oftentimes I make all of these great desserts and appetizers and a lot of it doesn't go. So I think this year I found some really, really great snacks and treats that are going to be a crowd pleaser. So without further ado, let's get to the kitchen and I'm going to show you some of the things that I'm going to be making this year. Today we're going to be making franken guac. So we need one cup of chopped avocado, which I have right here. And this is a little bit, this is a little bit better than a cup. And then we need a tablespoon of fresh lime. So I have my lime cut up here, a tablespoon of plain non-fat yogurt, a pitted black olive. I have this little snack size pitted olive. So I'm gonna use that. And then two cups of blue corn tortilla chips. And we also needed some kind of mushroom, cremini mushrooms. I could not find that anywhere. <laughs> I even asked in the produce section at the store. So I have no idea if you guys know what that is, let me know. And then we also needed the mild taco sauce. And I just have one of these packets that come with the taco kits that I use for taco night. And we're going to go ahead and put it all together and make this franken guac. So the first thing we need to do is mash the avocado, lime juice, and salt. So now all we need to do is assemble it and it's funny because apparently they couldn't find the mushrooms either because they're supposed to be on either side of his head for bolts which it says in the directions here and clearly it's not in the picture so <laughs> i just thought that was funny so i snipped the side of the taco seasoning bag to make the little um, stitches here in the mouth and then i sliced the olive to make the eyes i have the yogurt here it's supposed to be like the backdrop for the eyes and now really all i need to do is assemble it on this little casserole dish because this is what i have to put it in Nailed it. I think I did pretty good. It's not that different from the actual photograph and it was super quick and easy. So there is my Franken guac. So the Franken guac is almost Franken gone. It was a success. The kids really like it and it was a really healthy afternoon snack. Today we're going to do the mini mummy pizzas and here are all of the ingredients, but I'm actually going to do my own version because I did something similar to this for an after school snack when I was little and I feel like I can really simplify this. So if you want to do the more complicated version, you'll need a garlic clove, canned crushed tomatoes, chopped mushroom, chopped green bell pepper, chopped yellow onion, Italian seasoning. So that'll be your sauce, but I am just using regular marinara sauce to keep it simple. And then you're going to need four whole grain English muffins and four slices of low moisture part skim mozzarella cheese or any mozzarella cheese <laughs> and then um, two tablespoons of sliced black olives and i have my olives here so to make these little mummies i have my just regular from the deli sliced mozzarella cheese my olives then i have the king size pizzas because i'm making this for my kids right now for an after school snack I have my tray already and I'm going to go ahead and slice up the cheese. 
cut the olives and we'll uh, put it all together and put it in the oven on 425 for about 10 minutes until the cheese melts. So let's put this all together and see how it comes out. And here they are. I think they look really good. Mummy faces. And you could do this with smaller English muffins. These are the king size, but I think they look creepy and cute. And I probably would use less cheese next time. Like this one came out better than this one, for example. I might have done overkill on the cheese, but I think they're really cute. And when I do the comparison, it looks pretty close. Not bad. Okay guys, today we're going to make these pumpkin harvest bars. They sound really good for a snack or for a breakfast even. I think they look really, really good. So here is what we need. We need flour, baking powder, grated orange peel, cinnamon, salt, nutmeg, ginger, cloves, which I do not have, sugar, moths, natural applesauce, pumpkin, egg, and vegetable oil, and then raisins. Okay, so I have out all of my ingredients along with all of the measuring cups that I need. I already grated up some of the orange peel and then I have my eggs here, one whole egg and one just egg white. And then I've buttered my pan. I always like to use butter rather than oil. I just feel like it doesn't stick as bad and always tastes better. And then I have my bowl for wet ingredients. And then over here I have another bowl for the dry ingredients. So I'm going to start mixing everything up. Let me just show you guys the instructions. And here we go. Okay, so I just sifted in all of my dry ingredients and I just dumped all of my wet ingredients in here and I'm going to mix them up. And finally, you're gonna put it in the oven at 350 for about 25 to 30 minutes. And it's done, it looks really good. I'm gonna cut it up and give it a try. I just cut them all up and put them on this cute Halloween plate that you can't see, <laughs> but I'm actually eating one right now. And they're really good. They're not really very sweet. So if you were looking for like more of a dessert, you might even want to put a little icing on it. But it's definitely a great snack and would really make for like a nice breakfast even. You can definitely taste the spice in it. It's really, really good. Also, just want to let you guys know, kid approved. All of my kids are like loving this. So today we're going to make something that is well known as Christmas crack, but this version today is going to be Halloween crack. So here is everything that you need. I have all my stuff out. So I have a cookie sheet lined with aluminum foil, and then you're just going to need a pot because you're going to be boiling two sticks of butter, which is one cup of butter, in this pot. So in addition to the butter, you're going to need a 12 ounce bag of semi-sweet morsels, or you could do chocolate or dark chocolate, whichever kind you would like to do. And then any type of Halloween um, candy corn shapes. I have the autumn mix and then I have some scary shapes here too. You're going to need one cup of dark brown sugar. You can also use light brown, whatever you have, but it comes out a little bit better with the dark brown. And you're going to pack that into one cup. And you're also going to need <laughs> about two sleeves of saltine crackers. Okay, so the first step, you ready to do this, Madison? Because you're gonna be helping with the first step if you don't eat all the saltine crackers. <laughs> so this is a great one to do with your kids because it's super simple, especially the prep part before you're making things too hot. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to line the cookie sheet with the crackers. Here we go.
Okay, so we have all of our crackers lined up on the sheet and you can even break little bits and pieces to fill in the end because the crackers were getting too big for us because everything is going to kind of be going to stick together in the end. So it doesn't matter if it's broken up in little pieces because we're gonna break it up anyway. Okay, so now comes the hard part. Our next step is to bring the butter to a boil. Once the butter is melted and boiling, we're going to slowly add the brown sugar and we're going to keep mixing it for four minutes and watching it and mixing it and just making sure that it doesn't get ruined. That's where we're making our caramel sauce that's going on top. So as soon as all of this butter is melted and boiling, I'm going to dump the brown sugar in. And then once you have your entire tray covered with the caramel sauce, you're going to put it in an oven that's preheated at 375 for five minutes. Once you take your crackers out of the oven, you're going to sprinkle your chocolate chips on top. And you're gonna let them sit for about a minute or two until they start to soften up. And then with a very dry spatula, we're going to spread the chocolate all over these crackers. Okay, so the step that I've added is once you smooth out all the chocolate, um, I'm gonna put some candy corns on top. You We're not me and Madison's going to help. <laughs> We're not going to use the big pumpkins because I feel like they're just going to be a little but bit too big. Are so cute. They might not stick well. They're so cute. And then we also have these spooky skeletons and these pumpkins are a little bit flatter. So we might be able to use them. And there's some bones in here. So we're going to go ahead and stick these into the chocolate. <laughs> And that is what it looks like. So you can put it in the freezer for about 10 or so minutes, or you can refrigerate it overnight. I've heard that it works better if you refrigerate it overnight. So I'm gonna do that instead. And especially since I don't really have room in my freezer for a big tray like this, the fridge is gonna be perfect. So that is going to be our next step. So you're all ready, Madison? Yeah. You think it's gonna be good for your party? Yep, so tomorrow we're gonna break it up into little pieces and we're gonna put it on this tray that I bought at the dollar store and it will be ready to go for the Halloween party that Madison's going to tomorrow. It is the next day and we refrigerated this overnight, so now what I'm going to do is break it up and put it on this tray. And here is what it looks like. And I think especially because this is a Halloween treat, the more jagged and like messed up you can break the pieces into, the better. So I think it looks really cool. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in the fridge so that it's all ready for our Halloween party that we're going to tonight. If there is one thing that has always been the first thing to go at our Halloween party, it's deviled eggs. Definitely something that everyone seems to like and it's filling, so I feel like a lot of people go for that first thing. All right, so what you're going to need is a half a cup of boiling water. You're going to need one tablespoon of white vinegar. You're going to need black food coloring and green food coloring. You're also going to need hard boiled eggs and mayonnaise, and then some salt and pepper to taste. You can also use hot sauce if you wanted to, but I like to um, keep my deviled eggs pretty simple, and I don't really care for the hot sauce. So that is everything that you're going to need to make this recipe, and it's going to be spooky and fun. Okay, so this is the fun part. You're going to, after your eggs are cool, you're going to take the blunt end of a knife and you're going to just keep cracking it so that it shatters all over. I'm gonna try not to do this though. We don't want 
any of the shell to fall off, but you want to get those nice cracks. And now you're going to add into a bowl, I'm just going to use my candy corn dish, a half cup of boiling water, the tablespoon of vinegar, and then about 20 drops of the food dye. And since I have the gel, I just squirted a good amount in it. You can see the water's nice and black. And now I'm just going to soak these eggs in here for about five minutes. And I'm going to periodically stir them up so that they're all completely covered. So they've been soaking for over five minutes. Now I'm going to peel them under cold water and we'll see what they came out like. And here is the end result. I think they look pretty amazing. They came out really, really good. I'm so happy with the way that these turned out. And you could even just leave it at this and just do a big bowl of these kind of like monster alien looking eggs or they kind of look like spider webs really. So you could just do that and not even worry about making deviled eggs, but now we're gonna cut them open and we're going to make them into even more spooky looking eggs by taking out the yolk part and we're gonna um, dye that green. So I just put in a little bit more than maybe two tablespoons of mayonnaise. I never really measure this part out when I do it. I'm gonna put a little bit of pepper for taste and a little bit of salt. I normally also put mustard, but I'm scared it's gonna mess with the color green that I want it to be. So I'm gonna leave that alone for now. Okay, and then you're going to put some green food coloring in. You can put as much or as little as you want. And again, I have the gel, so I'm just gonna add a little bit at a time and see how much I wanna put in. And then the next thing you're going to do is get a Ziploc bag. Or you can use one of these, like they're decorating bags. You can buy them already kind of made for the purpose of squeezing out icing or squeezing out the center of a deviled egg. So I'm gonna put this into the bag and then we're going to fill all of those eggs. And here is what they look like when they're done. I think this is probably one of my favorite things that I made in this video. I think they came out really cool. And again, this is something that like everyone will eat. I feel like everyone likes this at a party. And look at the bottom. It's so creepy. It looks like a spider web. And I love the green filling. And then you just put some maybe toy spiders around it just to theme it up a little bit better. But definitely a lot of fun. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Comment below if you have any great recipes to share. And I hope that you guys all have a great Halloween. Take care. Bye.